Give him all your praise. Lift up your hand in worship at this hour. Wave your hands onto the air in total submission, in total praise, in glory to the Lord. Worship him, praise him. For the Lord is fearful in the praises of his people. We have gathered in his presence. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Worship him who is worthy to receive our thanksgiving, who is worthy to receive our praise and worship. Glorify him, glorify him. Yes, Lord, lift up your hands of thanksgiving to him. The root of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Psalm 95, verse 1 to 7 says that, Lord, you alone are worthy of our praise. So let us make a joyful noise to the rock of ages. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving, with praise, with a joyful noise. And I don't hear you. For the Lord is great. For the Lord is the King above all gods. For He is the mighty God. The mountains bow before Him. The mountains melt before Him. Father, we give you glory tonight. We worship you tonight. We thank you, Lord. We have come to worship you. We have come to say thank you for all you have done and for all you keep doing in the lives of your children. Blessed be your holy name. Oh, Jesus. We are inviting the angels and says to come and be with us in this moment of the Lord, in this moment in his presence. Father, take control. Let nothing of the flesh manifest tonight, but let your glory fill the atmosphere. And we appreciate you, mighty God, for what you are going to do tonight. For it has pleased you to gather your people unto yourself, even in this prayer meeting. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Worthy is your name. You have saved us from the hands of the enemies. Yes, my Lord. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And amen. My dear friends, it is my pleasure to welcome every one of us to the hearts of Jesus and Mary Ministries. And today we are going to listen to the Word of God, that Word that brings life, gives hope, that Word that strengthens us. And we are here tonight to worship our God. We are here to give Him praise and worship. We're here to lift his name above all names. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We cover the atmosphere with the blood of Jesus. We cover the message and the messenger with the blood of Jesus. Every interruption to this message, we cancel in the name of Jesus. Whatever is the agenda of the pit of hell against this message, we cancel completely in the name of Jesus. I just want you, Holy Spirit, to, uh, to begin to plead the blood of Jesus over this message. Plead the blood of Jesus over the messenger. Plead the blood of Jesus over the instrument that will hear this message. Those who will hear this message even in the future, we are pleading the blood of Jesus upon each and every one of us. Plead the blood of Jesus. Let our blood flow tonight. Let our blood sanctify us tonight. Let our blood prepare our hearts to what God is about to do tonight. Father, we thank you. King of glory, we thank you. Blessed be your holy name. We appreciate you, Jesus. Thank you, angels of God, for coming down. Thank you, mighty Jesus, for coming down. Thank you, God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, for being here. 
Thank you, our blessed mother, for being here to intercede that the gospel of your son shall get into our hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, we are going to take our reading from Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 10. Isaiah chapter number 11, verse 1 to 10. We shall be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, Catholic Edition. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. And with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist. And faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf and the lion and the, the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nothing child shall play over the hole of the asp. And the wind child shall put its hand on the other's den. They will not hurt or destroy or ever touch any harm on the child. On all whose place is the holy mountain. For the Lord will be full of the knowledge of the Lord. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus. My dear friends, it is my pleasure today to share with us a message titled the stump of Jesse. The stump of Jesse. And this is taken from Isaiah chapter 11 verse 1. A shoot shall come out from the stump of Jesse. And a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest on him. My friends, The stump, as we know, is what remains of a tree when it is cut down from the stem. That part of the, of the tree that stands resting on the earth when it is cut down at the stem is a stump. It is a picture of defeat. A picture of hopelessness. <laughs> it is a picture of shame. A picture that portrays a character that has no promise. A picture of disappointment, of failure, of boredom, of dryness. 
it is not a picture of anything good. A picture of sorrow. Yet there was a prophecy concerning that stump. That a shoot will come out of it. A little life will come out of what appears to be dead. What is believed to be dead. That life, new life, will shoot out. New life, a new branch, will grow out of it. And the, the prophecy continues that the Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, on the stump. So evidently, this stump is not a tree, as we know it. It is described as his, H-I-S, his roots. That was, we are talking of a being, a person. An identity. Without getting into deep theology, theology of all this, this stump is the hope of mankind. Is the life that comes to mankind that have been swamped and rooted in the land of sin. Jesus becomes that new shoot out of the stump of Jesse. This message brings to mind that God can give a new hope. God can bring life out of what appears to be dead. Do not forget Job 14 verse 7. For there is a hope for the tree. If it is cut down, it will grow again. It will sprout again. It will bear fruit again. And this was what was spoken concerning a tree. But it is also prefiguring what God wants to achieve in the life of each and every one of us. That no matter the situation we find ourselves, no matter how deep down we have gone, of falling into the pit of perdition, that God is able to bring hope again. No matter the spiritual dryness you are going through, no matter how long you have been in this desert, God is able to turn things around. God is able to bring hope again. That is the God we serve. The stump reminds us of lifelessness, but miracle brings life out of lifelessness. And that miracle is a miracle of God. The stump of Jesse. The people of Israel, to whom this message was originally directed to, was going through, the land was going through ugly situation. The people were like a forest burnt down by a wildfire. You know how it looks like. Their land looked like a wasteland, all the beauty taken away. The trees had been cut down. <laughs> but that one trunk that remains is a testimony that is waiting for a time of fulfillment. A bird will blossom, a life, a vitality will emerge. It is your message, it is your prophecy today. The Lord says that the Spirit of the Lord shall settle on him, on you. God is talking about recapturing, restoring the broken foundations of his people. Where is this message talking to you, my friend? Know that the message is for you. Know that the Lord is gathering his people. The Lord is strengthening his people. He wants to bring victory to them. He doesn't want us to exist in a state of confusion. We live in a life, in a world of so many disappointments. So many people are going through so many things. Likewise, Israel was going through so many disappointments. But the trouble they were going through 
was not without a cause. Their sin had opened the door for the enemy to come and they rode them and eat them down. The door of sin was opened and that brought into them a downfall. The leaders, the shepherds of Israel could not stand before the Lord for their sin was very visible. And the Lord was not happy with them. And so there was punishment. Amen? So, their sin, like a worm, had eaten them up. That's what a sin does. Their lives rotting, rotting to the fabrics. And they could hardly stand. They have become like a tree that is eaten down. But in that state of hopelessness, God sent his prophet Isaiah to tell them, even if only a stump remains, amen? Even if a stump remains, Chopping down the tree is still a prescription for future health. Those of you who are familiar with agriculture know that when you prune a tree, it grows better. It it becomes more fruitful. And uh, most trees, if you cut them at the stem, then they grow better. They grow new leaves. New life comes in. They start all over again. It's like a resurrection. And the Lord was using this symbol to speak to his people. That even though you have become a shadow of yourself, I am going to restore you. My dear people of God, God was talking about raising up a new leader for his people. A new leader. A Messiah who will lead his people into righteousness. That the Spirit of the Lord shall be upon him. He shall exhibit wisdom and understanding. Counsel and might shall be upon him. He shall be filled with the knowledge of heaven. He shall have the fear of the Lord with him. And he's not the person that Jesus who fits into this character. He is the new leader. Who is the new one, the leader, who king, who will lead the people of Israel to the promised land. To tell them that no matter how bad it is, I have raised a Messiah for you. He's Jesus. He's the one leading all of us to the place of glory. He has come to make us fruitful. And he's teaching us how to follow him. He's teaching us how to do away with evil or sin. And in this new shoot from the stump of Jesse shall be the mightiest tree and shall be a tree of life. <laughs> he will rule with righteousness and with justice. Again, I wish to repeat myself, Jesus fits into this character. He is that new shoot. He is the new shoot in our life when we open our lives for him to come in. My dear friends, as we prepare for a journey with the Lord in our fasting, as we would be starting this journey tomorrow with the Lord in a journey of 21 days of fasting and praying in seeking the face of the Lord. The Lord brings us to this scene of this stump of the, of the tree to tell us that as we come, no matter the situation, no matter the hopelessness, no matter the misery, no matter the disappointment, no matter the rottenness, the brokenness, there is hope, there is new shoot. There is new shoot. 
somebody will grow a new shoot. New life is coming. New strength is coming. New prayer life is coming. New grace is coming. A new shoot. The Lord is going to use these fasting and prayers to, to make the new person in us to come out. He has a new wine to pour upon us. But he has to allow us to go through certain process that will prepare us to be able to receive that new spirit. So he is preparing us with a new wine skin to be able to carry, contain the new wine. Lest we burst for our inability to contain what is given to us. So he wants to wash us clean. We're not the ones to wash ourselves clean. That is sin that is eroding our lives, that is eating us up, that is chopping us, eating the life in us. Praise God that that sin has not destroyed us or in our life. A stump may be left. But when we seek the righteousness of God, we will come to Him with open heart, with humility, with a heart of contrition, with a contract heart, we shall indeed receive Him. And He will grow on us. As if to say that we are like a soil on which the Lord grows. We are to guide the word of God we receive, the treasure that we receive. We will not allow anything of this world, not allow the kingdom of darkness, not allow sin to eat up what the Lord has deposited in our lives. We should not allow that to happen. Rather, we shall become like that branch growing on a tree. In this case, the tree is Jesus, the, the vine, the true vine. And we are the branches. In a sense, we are like a branch grafted on a tree. And that branch, over time, begins to derive nourishment, life, from the vine. So that the branch survives, lives, exists because what sustains it is a vine. And okay. Jesus is like that right. vine. Yeah. Jesus is that one who gives life to us. So let us guide this treasure. Say, Paul, because it the indescribable gift. But that is Jesus, the gift of God to us, to the world. A gift that is indescribable is a treasure. Jesus took time to describe the importance of having him in so many parables. One of such is the man who discovered a treasure a treasure in a land. And he decided to buy the whole land. He saw the treasure. He saw the gold. He saw it. The precious stone. He saw it. He decided not to buy the precious stone, but to buy the land. Telling us how wonderful, priceless the kingdom of God is. We should guide his presence in our lives so that we do not allow anything whatsoever to disengage us from him or to divorce him from us. Look at Mary and Joseph. Look at how they protected the infant Jesus from harm. Remember their way to Egypt. A journey through the desert. An arid land. A hot land. 
a land with hot air. That was the land they went through. Imagine the heat of the sun, the scorching sun that they went through. The sun had to heat them, scorch them all day. And yet in the night, they will face the coldness of the night. If you are familiar with the temperature dynamics in the desert, you see that in the daytime, it is very hot. Temperatures are the peak. In the night, it is very cold. The Holy Family went through all that. Imagine how hot the sand was for them. A hot earth. It's not like now we have special sandals or wears that would protect us from such a uh, hot, uh, um, heated up soils. That time, such things were not existing. And someone might say, oh, brother, but they travel with a donkey. Okay. Mary was on the donkey, who supposedly carrying Jesus. What of Joseph? The donkey cannot carry all of them. Joseph would like to provide some sense of little comfort for them, for the family, for the young family, for the wife and the baby. He had to wade through that sea of hot air, hot sand. And that, by the way, even the air that was blowing against them, the wind blowing against them, were carrying sand, hot air. Imagine this, the sand blinding their eyes. The troubles they went through cannot be completely recounted in this message. Yet, because God was with them in that suffering, they were able to make it to the end. Imagine how they protected Jesus, how they wrapped him up, protected him from the hot air, protected him from the cold um, air also in the night. Protected him from the gusts, you know, the, the the hot air with some sand. They protected Jesus from all this. This is a picture of how we have to protect Jesus in our hearts. Oh, brother, what do you mean by this? <laughs> Why would you tell me to protect Jesus? Jesus is the one to protect me. Listen. The Bible tells us, I believe in Proverbs 4, verse 23, Guide, guide the word with all diligence. Guide the treasure that you have received with all diligence. <laughs> guide your heart with all diligence. Is that your Bible? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. Keep your heart. Guide it with all diligence. With all alertness. For out of it springs up the issues of life. The heart. Keep your heart. Guide it. That is the place that the Lord wants to go and live. That is where the Lord wants to take us a tabernacle. Is our heart. It's so important to him. He wants to live there. He wants to be given the whole place to live in the, our heart. And we are told to guide it with all diligence. You know that was guide your heart in a way that will keep Jesus inside your heart. If our heart were to be an in, an in, you know, a place to give birth to Jesus. Mary would like to come there to give birth to Jesus. But because there were no room in the inns, she had to go to the place of the animals, to the manger, to give birth to her son. If we guide our hearts with our diligence, Jesus will live in that heart. So we have a lesson to learn from the life of Mary and Joseph. For they guided Jesus, clothed him 
to make sure he was protected. So in the same way, my dear friends, we have to guard our hearts with all diligence so that it will be a fitting place for the King of Kings to dwell. So that he will find in us, in our hearts, a tabernacle, a repose. So let us guide our heart so that it will be a place for Jesus to grow within our hearts and reign over our hearts. When we do this, then the Lord will be so delighted with us. He will dance, he will rejoice over us. He will be so pleased that we have given him a, a space to have his presence. <laughs> the Bible tells us in Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 17. Say, The Lord your God is with you, a mighty warrior who saves. Who does what? Who saves. He will take great delight in you, in his love. He will no longer rebuke you. But will rejoice over you with the singing, with the melody, with the joyful songs. Some translations will say, he will dance. The Lord will be happy. He will take delight in us when he sees a heart that seeks his presence. Do you hear me? When he sees the heart that seeks his presence, the Lord will rejoice. He will be so happy with such a heart. This is the heart he wants to see as we engage in this fasting. He wants us to walk in the light. In Isaiah chapter 2, verse 5, the prophet says, and that's actually the Lord speaking to the prophet to us, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. It's an invitation. St. Paul tells us in Romans 13, verse 12, turn from your darkness and put on the armor of light. That is the calling. This first thing we are going to be doing from tomorrow, we are going to be engaging from tomorrow, is a first thing we cannot afford to allow the enemy to rob us our testimony. If our heart is open for the Lord to dwell, the Lord himself will take great delight in us. And he who tells us in Zephaniah 3, verse 17, that he is a mighty warrior who saves. He will come to save us. He who promises that he will be with us. In Zephaniah 3, verse 17a, will come to be with us. By the way, is his name not Emmanuel? God dwelling among his people. Is that not his name? Is he not the one that is spoken of by the psalmist in Psalm 77, 14, you are the Lord who doeth wonders among your people, not among the dead. That God says, I will take delight in you if you seek me with all your heart, if you give me a space in your heart, if you give me that space, I will go into singing. That is what the Lord is saying. Amen? The Lord wants a surrendered heart. A heart that seeks His presence. And the same surrendering our hearts to the Lord is so important and is a condition for the Lord to 
take a great delight in us. Therefore, my dear friends, we don't have any other opportunity before engaging in this fasting and prayer, praying tomorrow than now to ask the Lord to take over our hearts. That we're giving Him our hearts. Can you talk to Him? We're asking the Holy Spirit to help us to surrender our heart to the Lord. We ask Him, Lord, come and take this heart. It belongs to you. You gave it to me. And never I knew I had a heart until I grew to the edge of reason to see a heart in my life as a gift from you. And you want to dwell in this heart. You want to live in this heart. Father, come and live in my heart. Come and take over my heart. Talk to him now. Whatever that will make me not to receive what you plan for me in this fast and prayer, Father, let that thing be gotten rid of this night. Prepare us for this journey. Prepare me for this journey. Prepare my family for this journey. Prepare AJM for this journey. This journey with you, it is not a journey with ourselves. It is a journey with you, Lord. For we know that if you journey with us, if you are with us in this journey, if your presence is with us in this journey, we know that you will take great delight in us and you are going to bless us. You are going to favor us. You are going to do great things for us. And so, Father, we ask you tonight, come to our rescue, come to our help. Father, come and dwell in us. Come and help us. Come and fortify us. Come and help us to have a heart that delights in you, a heart that loves you, a heart that is open to you, a heart that wants to desire you in everything that it does. Can you begin to talk to him now? Our Lord is a victorious warrior. He has told us he's a God who dwells among us. Let him come and take over. Let him lead us in this journey. Let him take over our heart. Let him come with his blood. And let his blood wash away every sin in us. Yes, my Lord. So that at the end of this journey, at the end of this fast, there shall be shouts of joy. There shall be gladness. For the Bible says that he, the Lord, will rejoice over his people with the gladness. Yes, Lord. Talk to him. Talk to him. Ask him to take over. We're asking him to take over. Let him be in charge of the heart. Let him take over. It is spoken of him in Isaiah 11 verse 1 that a shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse. Yes, and that branch will grow out of the roots. And in verse 2, the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So even now, we ask that the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon our hearts, that the Spirit of wisdom and understanding shall rest upon our hearts, that the Spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord shall come and dwell in us, shall come and overshadow us, that the spirit of righteousness shall rest upon us in the name of Jesus, that the beauty of the Lord shall rest upon us, that the spirit of wickedness shall be taken out of us in the name of Jesus, that every wickedness in us, let them be uprooted tonight in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord, we ask the Lord to give us the spirit of loving him, let our heart be a heart of faithfulness, a heart of righteousness. In the name of Jesus, begin to talk to him now. Whatever thing that will destroy this fasting, whatever thing that will make this fasting not to be pleasing to the Lord, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. That at the end of this fasting, there shall be joy, there shall be testimonies, there shall be praise in the name of Jesus. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. For the Lord is here to hear the prayer, the cry of his children. Talk to him now. Talk to him now. Oh, Jesus. He is a mighty God. He is a heavenly God. He has a plan for you tonight. In the name of Jesus. That a new life will blossom in my heart. In the name of Jesus. Every heart that is like a desert, let the Lord come and take over. Every heart that is like a stone, let the Lord melt it and let the Spirit of the Lord take over. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Talk to him now. Talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. Let the Holy Spirit flow tonight. Let him sanctify us tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Father, have your way tonight. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord. Whatever thing that will make this fasting, not to bring glory to your name, Father, we cancel in the name of Jesus. 
Mighty God, we cancel in the name of Jesus. Talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord, talk to the Lord. A new tree, we grow. A new tree, that tree of life, we grow in my family. A tree of achievement will grow in my family. A tree of victory will grow in my family. In the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Every tree of disappointment, let them go down in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of downfall, whatever thing that disconnects him from Jesus, let those things go down in the name of Jesus. The spirit of failure, the spirit of dryness, the spirit of evil, by the power of the name of Jesus, be consumed by fire. In the name of Jesus, thank you, mighty God. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, ancient of days. There is no one that's like you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. We begin to cover the message, the blood of Jesus. We cover the messenger with the blood of Jesus. We cover the days of this fasting with the blood of Jesus. The seconds and minutes and hours of this fasting will cover with the blood of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we cover every prayer in this fasting with the blood of Jesus. All the post prayer line fasting will cover with the blood of Jesus. All the prayers and fasting, every prayer, every journey is covered with the blood of Jesus. Father, have your way tonight. Have your way tonight. It is well with us in the name of Jesus. Yes, my Lord. Somebody will transit from hopelessness to hope, from the state of being a, defeat, a defeated soul, from a place of being a victim to a place of victor. Because this stump of Jesse is coming back to life in my life, in your life, in this ministry. Testimony shall blossom in the name of Jesus. I just want you to declare it with your mouth that through the fasting, I am anticipating testimonies. I am anticipating appointments, not disappointment. In the name of Jesus, the Lord shall help me to have victory. The Lord shall promote me. The Lord shall promote you. The Lord shall promote this ministry. In the name of Jesus, we shall embrace victory. In the name of Jesus, the enemy shall go down. The enemy shall be shut down. In the name of Jesus, that in this very fasting, we shall release the arrow of victory, the arrow of deliverance. It shall be our lot and our portion. In the name of Jesus, thank you, mighty God. Every condemnation against us is cancelled. In the name of Jesus, every giant standing on our way to mess us up in this fasting, we cancel it in the name of Jesus. We pray for the spirit of prayer to rest upon us. Yes, my Lord, how can we pray without the help of the Holy Spirit? So we ask the Holy Spirit in the course of this fasting to be our partner in the name of Jesus. Let him strengthen us in this journey. Let him strengthen us in this journey. In the name of Jesus, talk to him now. Talk to him now. Jesus, Jesus, Father, strengthen your people in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you because you are doing great work now. I just want you to talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Let great things happen in your family. In the name of Jesus, let this fasting be a fasting that will open great doors of favor. Let this fasting open doors for the light of Jesus to enter your life, enter your family in extraordinary way, in a way you have never experienced Jesus. Yes, Lord. Let there be visitation in this fasting. Ask the Lord to visit you in this fasting. Tell him that you want to encounter him in this fasting. In the name of Jesus, let his light destroy every spirit of shadow. In the name of Jesus, every evil shadow, demonic shadow, let them be broken. In the name of Jesus, talk to him, talk to him, talk to him. That through this night, we are reconciling with the Lord to prepare us for this journey. We are taking on the armor of the Lord. According to Romans 13 verse 12, in the name of Jesus, we shall not walk in darkness, but we shall walk in the light of God. In the name of Jesus, yes, my Lord, thank you, mighty God, for taking us through this fasting into a season, a season of divine entrance, of divine encounter, into a season when we shall meet the Lord face to face, into the season of Advent, when we shall encounter the baby Jesus. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for what you are doing. Thank you for what you are preparing us to become through this fasting and prayer. Thank you that every prayer we make, every step we take in this fasting, shall bring us closer to you. And that the, your light in all shall make us brighter. That the light shall even become brighter. Your light in us will become brighter and shine more and more in the name of Jesus. 
Yes, my Lord. Father, we thank you. Thank you because we know that what you have started, you complete. That every dry ground will turn into a land of fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. That our lives shall not be a wasteland in the name of Jesus. Our lives shall not be like a desert in the name of Jesus. But it shall be a land that is fruitful in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the new resources you are bringing to your people through the fasting. Thank you, King of glory, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for we shall embrace you, and you shall embrace us in this fasting, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of glory, for there is no one that's like you. We know that the cloud of your presence is upon us to lead us in the night and in the day, that your pillar of cloud will lead us in the, night, in the day, and that your pillar of fire shall lead us in the night, that in every step of this fasting, Lord, your presence is with us. That is what we know. That is what we rejoice. That is why we are rejoicing, because your presence is with us. Father, we thank you. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you for the prayer that has prepared us for this fasting. You have used the intercessory prayer of this ministry to prepare us for this fasting. Father, we thank you. Thank you for this preparation that you have used to launch us into a higher realm. Father, we are grateful. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of glory. Thank you, Jesus. May we encounter your grace in this fasting. May we encounter your grace in a extraordinary way. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We appreciate you, mighty Jesus. Reveal yourself to us even in dreams and in visions in this very fasting, Lord. For that is your promise that in the last days, that your people, your sons, your daughters, they shall dream dreams, they shall see visions. Father, let it come to pass that in the course of this fasting there shall be an, uh, there shall be an escalation of revelations in the name of Jesus. That your people shall see you even in dreams and in visions. Oh, what a joy awaits us in this fasting. Father, we give you glory. You can lift up your hand and begin to wave unto him and begin to appreciate him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Thank you for we are hidden in you. And therefore, nothing shall take us away from you in the name of Jesus. All the instruments you shall use in this fasting, Father, we thank you because you are going to use them to bless us. Thank you because you are going to speak through them. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all the messages, all the preaching, all the prayers, because your hand is there, that we shall not pray or preach in the flesh, but your spirit will direct us and put words in our mouths. So, Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord, as we lift all the intercessors to you, that you will bless them one by one, that you will bless them as they take extra step to pray for the success of this fast and prayers. Father, even as many that will make extra commitment to engage in this fast and prayers, Father, we hand them over to you, that you will raise your mighty hands upon them and empower them to the glory of your name. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, King of glory, that this storm that remains, that this remnant that remains shall bring glory to your name. Father, thank you. In the name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, Mother, amen. We'll cover this fast of of Jesus. We'll cover this prayer of of Jesus. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' gracious, mighty name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen, Mother, amen. And amen.